Hey there, everyone. Uh, Yankee Mad Dog Messiah here with you on this uh, somber Monday here in Rhode Island, to say the very least. It's, you know, a day of remembrance here as we remember the victims that were lost in the Station Nightclub fire. And the Station Nightclub fire, uh, this is going to be all over the news today. Uh, with the coverage here locally, to say the very least. And Station Nightclub Fire, if you're not familiar with it, and I know I have a lot of Generation Z uh, subscribers out there, was a nightclub fire that happened in West Warwick, Rhode Island. 100 people died in the fire. 96 people died in that building. Later on, it was four people that died due to injuries. They were in a Boston hospital getting treated for severe burns and perished. And here in Rhode Island, it will always be a dark day, as I've mentioned. And, you know, of course, this is a day of remembrance. This is a day where, you know, you remember the people that died, the loved ones that are still grieving. Uh, the people that were injured in this fire that had a long reco recovery. So it's just, you know, it's a tough day for everyone here. And I'm going to share my experience of what happened that night. I didn't go to the concert. I will say that. I will talk about really the aftermath of it and really share the story to my subscribers. So that night, I was actually prepping for an assignment that I was doing. I was in college at that time. And one of the assignments that I was doing is um, I had to public speak. I was in a public speaking class. It was something that was going to help me. I have like really bad anxiety at that time too i had anxiety i was always nervous about speaking in front of people so i was just prepping you know for uh what i was going to talk about which obviously the assignment was what major are you taking and why do you want to get into this profession so that night after i was done you know, practicing, I decided, you know, I'm just going to relax, lay down, watch some TV, watch the uh, the local sports stories coming out here. And at the time, and if you want to know about the sports scene here in Rhode Island, Patriots, this season was done. They didn't make the playoffs. Uh, the Celtics were bad. The Bruins were... They didn't have the best season. They were just really struggling to get into a playoff spot. And then, of course, Red Sox season, they were starting up spring training. So I was getting all of, you know, the information. And then after the sports segment was done, I was watching uh, Channel 12. And Channel 12 has said that there is some breaking news that there was a fire in West Warwick, a five alarm fire, and they're going to get updates and share it on the news the next morning. So 11.35 comes, and I'm watching the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Jay Leno at that time was over like Rover. I loved his monologues, especially with him attacking George W. Bush, and then... Within five minutes of the Tonight Show, they broke the news. There were reporters on the scene, and they were talking about um, this horrific fire. It was a nightclub fire that there was multiple uh, departments going to West Warwick, and you can actually see the fire, like the footage of it. It was just devastating, to say the very least, what it was, and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to stay up and watch this coverage, and throughout the few hours that I was up watching, they were reporting on the death tolls, they were like, they, 40 people died in it, and I was like, this is horrific, this is bad, so I go to bed, next morning, I wake up so I can get ready to go to class, 
Um, the campus that I went to uh, is about a few minutes. I would have to be morning traffic uh, to get to school. So I just go online, you know, checking my emails. And I'm like, you know, let me go on, you know, the websites, the news websites to see what was happening. They were still doing the continuing coverage. And you can see from the headline, 96 people died. And I was like, you know, I just had a heavy heart on that day. And my mom, I remember she came home um, that morning. She used to work a uh, graveyard uh, at a factory that used to uh, uh, ensemble... Um, or assemble, you know, plugs, you know, like outlet plugs. And she was telling me, like, during break that she saw, like, a cloud of smoke. And I was like, Mom, you know where that was from? That nightclub fire in West Warwick. And my mom was worried that my sister, because my younger sister at that time uh, used to go into the nightclub scene. But I know that she did not go to this club because this was... Like, this club was like a roadhouse. It had rock music. My sister was not into rock music. You know, she's into the hip-hop rap scene. And I was like, Mom, she didn't go there. I know that's not her cup of tea when it comes to music. So as I'm going to campus, because my campus was right near Rhode Island Hospital, I remember just seeing, like, news media outlets uh channel six which is uh an abc station up here channel 10 nbc channel 12 cbs uh regional media new england cable news was there uh media outlets from boston national uh cnn msnbc just think about that for a moment before MSNBC and before uh, CNN really got into politics diehard, they were actually reporting uh, like national stories. It, it was just blocked. Like Rhode Island Hospital, literally the entrance to go to Rhode Island Hospital, especially the emergency room, it was just jammed with media. So I would take another route and this other route, there was like the state police over there and I had to explain to the state police, oh, I'm a student over here. I had to flash in my uh, campus ID card, which they let me. They were very nice and generous knowing the fact that I was going to school. But that road that I had to enter, that different route, they were using that to transport patients to Boston because Rhode Island Hospital, that campus, they have the helicopter transportation. It's not on top of the hospital buildings. It's in another section. And, you know, just like coming home from class, I was only there for like two hours that day. I had um, two classes that day. You would see like more of the media just like packing into Rhode Island Hospital, like right around that area. It was just crazy. And just watching what really happened. Pyrotechnics was what caused that fire. And great, right? Uh, you know, I also listen to, you know, I'm eclectic when it comes to my music. I listen to hip hop, rap. I do listen to rock. Uh, this new wave of rock on um, the the hot rock from the 80s, I knew who Great White was. And when they were actually showing footage of them doing the pyrotechnics at another concert in New Jersey, which, by the way, the club owner had said that he never um, gave permission to the band to use pyrotechnics. And then that's when, you know, Great White, I was like, you know what? They become now a liability. I really do believe that they were the ones responsible for this. And all of the prosecution, all of the, you know, the investigations and stuff, it went to the Dadarian brothers, um, you know, who I also believe, too, that they were responsible for what happened that night. And they did get um, 
convicted by a grand jury. They did plead guilty to a hundred counts of manslaughter. And they got a slap in the wrist with that. Um, if you watch any of the documentaries on the Station Nightclub, uh, you're going to see why fucking Rhode Island... And I didn't mean to use any vocal language here. Why the criminal justice system here in Rhode Island is so messed up. Like, to me, they should have got more of a sentence instead of the, the slap of the wrist that the judge gave them, a lesser sentence. But it was just, you know, I, I don't really want to get into it. If you really want to do the research on it, there's a lot of stuff online about it. So, um, did I know any of the victims that passed away? Um, no. No. I do know some people that were affected by this tragedy. I had a classmate of mine that I was in in junior high. Her aunt actually died in the fire. And a local person up here lost his um, fiance and unborn child in that fire as well. So they say, you know, the... Um, it's 100 people that died. I always say it was 101 that died in that fire because of the unborn child. But yeah, it's just it's a somber day here in Rhode Island, like I said, you know. And, you know, my heart goes out to the victims, you know, their families. And, you know, the today for me, it's the power of prayer. That's what it is. It's the power of prayer that um, really is a theme of this Monday and always the theme on this date every year. I always, you know, like this morning, you know, before I went to the gym, I just um, woke up, did a little bit of a prayer to remember the victims and went on on my day. So that's really my thoughts on the Station Nightclub Fire. And if you have any stories, if you're a victim or if you're um, somebody that was affected by this and watching this video, uh, drop a comment. Um, this is uh, really the forum to do it. And oh, one more thing about that too. And what was really... Um, a lifesaver when that fire happened that night for people that got out and they had like minor burns was we had um we had a snowstorm a few days before that um fire happened it was a big nor'easter that we had it's about an inch and a half of snow that we had on the ground people were actually going into the snow the snow banks and really trying to heal the wounds that they had gotten uh, from the fire. There's stories about that online, too. So that snowstorm that we had that prior weekend was really a lifesaver for that. Even though we did lose a lot of people in that fire, people that actually escaped and had some burns, they were treating their burns with with the snow and of course you know you had people in the hospital in comers because they had all of those chemicals in their body from inhaling the smoke so that's you know it was just chaos that night so until then it's a yankee messiah i'm out peace love and prayers to all those people affected by this horrible tragedy that happened 20 years ago.